Greetings everybody, Strategic Sage here, thanks for joining me, and welcome to Egypt Old Kingdom, new series on the channel, and this is going to be running concurrently with Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom, which is focusing on China, as the next phase in the Historic Perspective Saga. More links about that in the description if you'd like to know more. This is about Ancient Egypt, of course, it's a couple years old, by Clara's Victoria. They've done some other games, Marble Age, uh, Pre-Dynastic Egypt is a precursor to this game. And I think it's quite interesting and fairly addictive. It's a mix of some building aspects and some management, resource, and empire aspects. Let's dive into what we have going on in Egypt here. Okay, so first up we need to set our rules. And uh, the game mode, I'm going to do historic on all of these choices here for the rules. But we can also do aliens or mummy apocalypse if you want to go a little crazy. You've got freedom in terms of, you know how true to history is this you know no trials with historical events or complete sandbox mode it's not nearly as linear as some of the other games that Clara's Victoria has done and then how many events and trials are we going to have and you can have just more or even more and then how do the gods figure into things the historical mode here is balanced you can do almighty gods which has them more extensively having influence or less influence with the absence option. And then for the prologue, why are we arriving here? So we have lots of resources, an easy backstory, middle ground, historical, that's what we're going to be going with, balanced resources, or you can have very few starting resources. Similarly with some of the events, the things that you're going to find in the city. You can have an easy option for beginners, you can have a really hard option in Hell on Earth, or we're going to go in the middle, again, historical variant. For the save option, I'm really good at having technical difficulties or messing things up, so I'm going to allow myself to save if I want to, but we have the Iron Man type options. And then who is your Patreon god going to be? Ptah, Horus for Order playstyle, or Seth for Devious playstyle. And we're going to go again with the default historical variant. So just a, basically a standard, this isn't a challenge run, it's more of a historical immersion run. Lots of really good history in this game. They clearly cared about ancient Egypt. And so we have a really nice historical type of art style, I think. And these little blurbs coming up during our loading screens. Memphis, 3500 BC, population 250. 3500 BC, of course, five and a half thousand years ago, but numbers are numbers. Um, a phrase that I've heard that I think makes good perspective of this is to the Romans, ancient Egypt was more ancient than the Romans are to us if you go just by the timeline. So I think that's a good way to get a sense of perspective of just how long ago this is. A lack of free land in Upper Egypt, Upper Egypt being upper in terms of altitude geographically, um, it's actually south of here and Memphis itself just south of the Nile River Delta. In order for us to have earned the right to rule these lands. The gods command our tribe to grow. Uh, need to reach a total of five workers, so that's our initial goal. And Memphis, of course, was the capital of ancient Egypt during the Old Kingdom. Now, our long-term goal, build a powerful nation within 300 years to survive a harsh final trial, and actually a premature one, but we'll get to that. There is also a medium-range goal that we can see right away. Unlock the map of Egypt by uniting all of Memphis as a single chiefdom. Everything you see here and more is Memphis. So we will definitely have our work cut out for us. And over here we can just see the quest information again. That's always available. The arid period. Climate's becoming cold and arid. Great desert expands. Seth, the evil god of sands. Conquering new lands. Large animals are fleeing. Peoples of the savannah migrating to the Niles, choking off our resources and slowing down our population growth and food supply. So that's not good, but... We also have, counterbalancing that, the first chiefs ruling, led by a clan of Upper Egyptian origin, trace their lineage to Horus, the solar god. Each chief is considered to be the personification, supernatural powers, and won't let any harm come to our tribe. Now, I definitely don't have supernatural powers, let's be clear on that, but we do get plus 10% growth from this particular bonus, and these will change as time goes on, but you'll often have a climate and a particular type of ruling class or society uh, effect. So, food. One of the most important resources. 
Try to produce as much food as possible. Keep a stockpile just in case. Without plenty of food, population growth is impossible. Very true. There's our food stockpile. And notice it has minus 0.5 from spoilage. We've got spoilage, spoilage, and retirement here under army is the same thing as spoilage. Just called something else. So with those four resources, they do decline some. It's a limiter on how much you can stockpile. It's also a waste uh, mechanic. You don't want a big stockpile that you're not using, is pretty much the important point here. We can create a new worker, and we're definitely going to do that. Cost 10 food and 1 luxuries, and you can see we're going to lose 1 food and 1 luxuries. That is the red thing being the luxuries. Per worker. So there's a maintenance cost. Now we do need to put 1 down here in the 1 region that we do have fully scouted. And then you can see the numbers here. How many turns it's going to take to scout out. We want to focus on these hilly areas as we are here and also the floodplain which is better for agriculture early on. Up here by the you know upper areas the plateaus not so interested in that and then over here by the river probably not going to be as good as well. This is looking swampy and boggy over here. This is probably more of a hill area. I'm just gonna slide up this way. I mean, technically we can't see what's there, but you can see through the clouds what, you know, the terrain is kind of like. So you can almost sometimes cheat a little bit and see what's actually going to be there. Of course, I can move the map around if I choose to do so. In any case, let's see what we can find as we try to expand. Okay. Wow. Fun stuff here. We're going to go ahead and clear all of this out. But uh, plus culture, this is the spirit of Thoth. And there's one hill square like this every time you play. Now that plus 50% culture behaves weird. It actually doesn't behave properly. But there's some antelopes here. Their bonus would be better if they had better relations. Which we could increase slowly over time. This would be an interesting, interesting one to occupy early on. I do want to continue scouting though. I don't want to just accept that. So let's see. There, there could be something positive over here, even though it might be swampy. I'm going to go ahead and try that out. Yeah, I know. That's terrible. This is terrible. Okay, this is just really bad luck. There's a 5% chance of a negative event. And negative events are bad. For these accursed place things. We can't do anything about that. But I'm not even worried about the resource thing. I, I can't afford the negative event, so now I've got to spend some time knocking this out. It's going to take four turns. And this is just, it's a big setback for early in the game, but there's really nothing to be done but wait it out. And so there's a fair amount of RNG in the game, as we're seeing, along with the historical events that happen at certain dates, no matter what. So there's it's kind of a weird combination synthesis of linear and random factors. Production and construction. Production are the hammers that represent various tools and building materials we use for construction. Improve areas allow us to increase resource growth. And without a huge income, construction of pyramids would be impossible. Very, very true. So we've got a few more turns of this. And probably have to adjust our early strategy due to this delay. Okay, first Egyptian chiefdoms. In Upper Egypt, a.k.a. not here, but where we came from, strong tribes have subjugated their neighbors and created tribal unions' chiefdoms. Ambos, Ebidos, Hierakonpolis. These are centers of such chiefdoms ruled by chiefs tracing divine lineage from Seth, Wepwalet, and Horus. Okay. So in other words, we're behind the game a bit in establishing ourselves. Evil hyenas have joined because we didn't have enough problems over here. Now, what they're going to do is... Boy, horrible relations. They're just going to knock down the food in that area. We can get rid of them. Yes, impudent hyenas. We can get rid of them eventually. Stealing our food and frightening us with their demonic laughter. Though they're too cowardly to attack people. We're busy doing something else. Okay, so animals are an important part of the life. They are. We can hunt them, worship them, please them by bringing gifts. We can feed them and domesticate them. And high relations increase bonuses and decrease penalties. All of that's true. Like, if if their relations get too positive, then you actually won't have any effect even from the negative hyenas or other types of animals. 
and the antelopes would be a higher bonus as well if they were positive. So, in any case, onward we go. Land is freed from the curse, so we don't have any negative events coming our way. And we have available here technologies they want us to tell us about culture because of that. So culture is our accumulated knowledge of the world, granted by the god Thoth. We can make a breakthrough and discover technology through the eponymous menu. Uh, increase resource growth, unlock new buildings, provide other improvements. So let's see where we are on the tech screen. Now we have three to start off with. These are the ones we can get. These are locked for various reasons. Now this is very, very long. Like... We have 30-some points right now, and you, there are technologies that can require several thousand culture, okay? And some of them are not available to us because of how much they cost. Some of them have prerequisites, like public works requires craftsmanship before you can even do it. But first of all, let's take a look at what we already have, because they have some nice little historical blurbs in here. So we have a tribe, rudiments of a class society, uh, economic stratification along with hereditary power, tribal chiefs, with religious and military functions. They spoke in the name of the gods and decided whether war or peace was needed. Even rain couldn't start without their encouragement. And so our initial bits of income come from this. So we have a bit of a structure forming here. We're not just hunter-gatherers or foragers, you know, we're developing a society. Permanent settlements. Settlements consisted of rectangular mud brick houses. And you can see the difference here between this, you know, mud bricks. In China, we had the circular buildings made out of much different material. And assorted pottery, flax, linen clothes, wove mats and baskets, first artisans. We've got division of labor happening here. And then we have agriculture. Bread, beer, fish, garden vegetables, we've got animals as well, so a developed Neolithic society is what we're talking about at this point, but still very much individual, tribal oriented. Okay, so what we want to get here, my strategy for this game is to advance so that you can advance so you can advance more. I'm going to lean heavily into culture, so we get plus 1.5 culture from cosmetics. Uh, from craftsmanship, you can see we can get a bonus to our luxuries and our production. Or we can get a bonus to food growth from the domestication of cats. And all those will be valuable, but we are going to go with cosmetics for the culture. And so we have taken our first step forward, and we get the blurb on these. A practical use, malachite-based eyeshadow, protected the eyes, used by all groups. And Egyptian protected their own eyes with ritual pigments, and we of course discussed... Uh, ochre before, how that was used even among Stone Age societies for identification, etc. This is just an outgrowth of that. All right, so I want to move you over here. We're going to get that little bit of culture. We're going to get a decent amount of food, a little bit of production. But you're just going to kind of hang out here while we grab this because... Acacia trees are providing a little bit of extra production here, but if I were to try to build a building here, notice how it says acacia will be lost. We want to deal with the consumables first before we build improvements. And this will give us 12 production in four turns, and that'll be enough to allow us to build additional things. Our population isn't going anywhere anytime soon, so we want to do that. And tribes... We have numerous neighbors. Soon we will have to unite them all under the rule of Horus. So we're not the only ones here. Build relationships carefully as you pick your allies and enemies. Friendship makes trade more profitable. Enemies can unite against you. Okay. You see this timer here going down as to when the hyenas are going to leave. But we now also have access to cults. And we need to talk a little bit now about the Egyptian pantheon. And essentially at the very top of it, they're not represented here. But you have Geb or Keb, God representing the earth. And then you have Newt, the goddess representing you know, the sky, the cosmos, etc. And the basic idea is that they had five children, eldest of which was Osiris. And one of the brothers of Osiris was Seth. And for various reasons, there are multiple stories as to why, but basically Seth's wife 
seduced Osiris, Seth got jealous, kills his older brother, and mutilates the body. And then there's just different stories in some of the earlier writings about how Horus fits into all this. Because Horus is either one of Seth's other brothers, or Horus was the offspring of Osiris and the nephew. And even within the same writing, there will sometimes be the reference to them as both. But one of probably the central conflicts in the Egyptian pantheon is between Seth and Horus. Now how this plays in here is, you know, Horus is the god of leadership and kingdoms and authority and all of that type of thing. Seth is chaos, war, disorder. Happy is the god of the Nile. And then we have Ptah, which is our patron god at Memphis, craftsmanship, construction, and all of that. And while it really isn't accurate to what happened in the early writings regarding Seth, you know, actually Set, there are pharaohs by the name of Seti and so on, but Seth eventually became to be known as a very negative force and is sort of the baddie, the negative god for this game. And we want to definitely keep Seth protection up. So it's protection from two common negative events. It's going to cost us 10 culture. And so we're going to select that and do the worship option. And that's always the first thing we need to do. And then we worry about other things that we want to use the cults for later as we continue to bring in more favor. Now, importantly, each one of these you do upgrades the cost for the next one. Because that one costs 10. Now it's going to cost 11 for our next worshiping of a cult. But we can see the shield against Seth here. And we pleaded with the king to defeat the hateful Seth. And interestingly, even if you choose Seth as your patron god, you're still pleading with the king to defeat yourself. Weird how that works. Bizarre. But anyway, calling upon the gods to halt whatever Seth commits against our land, shield the king, and restrain Seth. So the next two things Seth tries to do will get blocked. And those can really set you back. And things like droughts and earthquakes and other nasties that we don't want to deal with. Okay. So now we're going to continue on. First contact with Canaan. And this is one of those things that sort of messes with people sometimes. Uh, established between Egyptians and the people of Canaan. Nobility highly values the quality of elite goods from that region. Whereas from the north have become the object of desire for any respectable chief. There's actually no practical gameplay thing to do with that. It's just giving you a little blurb of history. But that's not super obvious. In any case, we are very gradually increasing our food and losing all these other things. Yes, yes, auto saves. But one more turn, we're going to get rid of these acacias. Years of divine grace have come. Well, this is one of the random events in our favor. A lucky inundation of the Nile allows us to reap extra harvest. What should we do with the surplus? Do we want favor? Or... Do we want to save some of it? Now, we could go either way here. But I'm going to go with saving the food because we really need to get population growth going. So we're going to grab that, 10.5. The acacias are cut down, plus this is just enough for us to create one additional worker group. So we're going to do that. And we want to make sure that we're keeping on top of everything. It's really easy to get in the habit of just hammering end turn, but you want to make sure everybody's doing what you want them to be doing here. So I want to switch here now. We've got the production. We don't want to waste any more than we have to. We want to increase our future production, increase our luxuries, etc. Getting a workshop up is critical. So we're going to do that. And notice we can some things you can do and you won't produce any other resources in that particular region, but we're still producing the food here. We do want to continue exploring. And we could go out here. I'm going to actually head up this way, though, further up on this hill. I always want to have at least a spot or two open that we've explored. And then research. So we're going to go with craftsmanship next. And basically, I'd like to get this for cult, more culture and for the public works, but we can't do that yet because it requires craftsmanship first, and this will boost our production and our luxuries. So I think it's the best option available. 
And we have groups of craftsmen satisfying the needs of agriculture and everyday life, emerging as part of the rural community. Nobility were then able to procure quality goods and large volumes of standardized products available. So, continued division of labor and then continued income for us here. All right. Not interested in you telling me about the hotkeys. Thank you very much. Well, this is going to be problems. I mean, there's sand here that's causing issues, more bad hyenas. We're going to have things to do to get anything useful out of there. I would like more lower ground. I think... Yeah. I'm going to hop on and see what's over there. I'm going to do one more round of exploring. And that's just talking about the different patrons you have. We have, you know, different things that Pata can do here, and those are different than what you'd have if you were used Seth or Horus for your choice. But we're not going to want to use these anytime soon. Division of tribes, speaking Proto-Indo-European languages, taking place on the Pontic Caspian Steppe. These tribes will spread across the world and create new civilizations, various other languages. In other words, societies are growing and splitting up. That's what that word salad amounts to. We're about to get our workshop up, though. That's what I'm most concerned with. And there we go. So we're getting the one food, the 1.3 production, and the 0.5 luxuries. This is now a very productive area for us, thankfully. And I think with these antelope, the best thing for us to do here is going to be to hunt them and get the food. But I really can't do that yet because I would have a food shortage if I did it now. So we're just going to carry on forward. Well, that's not bad. It's not great either, but there are swamps there. And we have more of all this. Now, we haven't had any negative events from Seth, so I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to worship Horus, which is the one I normally use. Food growth is nice, and this isn't bad either, but I really like the idea of the culture. Again, I'm going to lean heavily into culture focus. Be as advanced as possible. There we go. And uh, now it's going to tell us about favor and cults. We're already well into that, but authority in the eyes of gods and ancestors. You'll need to build cemeteries, temples, and appease the powers that be the best you can, or just collect it through other means. Ask for their assistance and patronage through the cults menu. Choose them wisely. Your future depends on it. That That's very true. Now, we could go here with domestication of cats, but I don't want to. I still want to wait for the public works, and we're not quite there yet. So, let's see. If we let you hang on down here. Now, these will destroy any nearby fields and guardians, is what the hippos do. But we're not too concerned about that at the moment, because we don't have any nearby fields and gardens. So, I do think this is probably going to be a good option. But I actually want to... You know what? I'm going to leave you there for now. I'm hoping this will be a better hill tile for us. Yes, except for the lions. And that's going to tell us about the spoilage. 5% of all those each turn, which we already talked about. New territory explored. Yep, chance of death from the lions... 15% of return, so we need to do some hunting. And you can see the success chance here, 30% and then plus 5% of return. Meaning that usually the second or third turn is the average point in time in which you'd get that. We can step up here now for our public works. But I'm going to want to clear this area off as quickly as possible. Because given, we've had a relatively slow economic start because of some of the things that have happened. So that means I'm going to need to build up the military soon. And it's not going to happen on its own. Okay. So 
So onward. And there's our first treachery of Seth, but we blocked it. Oh, goody, first contact, and it's also negative. It can be hostile, it can be neutral, or it can be friendly. The Baboon Tribe, they're hostile. They can create quite a lot of trouble for us. There they are. Now, we can do various things if we were to come over here. Let's take one of our workers. We could try to improve their relations. Um, you know, we would gain 3% relations every turn for 0.8 luxuries. And we could try to trade if their relations were good enough. We could try to get their relations on the good side so they don't attack us. That would take several turns, and we just don't have, we don't have enough people for that right now. So I'm going to opt for the defend against them instead option, but we need to take care of these lions first. Yeah. We're just kind of... It's not a great a start. We can still get this done, but there's the lions done now with all of their production in place. And now that we have the public works, that allowed us to deal with things like the thickets or the swamps down here. So we're going to go ahead and knock these out. That's going to take another four turns. And then we can start heading towards other things. So... We are in need of some good fortune at this point. Okay. So I would like to go back here for domestication of cats. This is also an option to give us more favor, but I really need to get our military going. So I'm going to get primitive army. And that's going to give us, you can see, plus one army every turn. And every barracks we build will give us another plus one. So now our army is actually into the positive. If you want to profit at your enemy's expense or just want to defend yourself, you'll need an army. Create some troops, a barracks on vacant hills, and start training warriors. We're we'll beginning to that soon. They grow old over time and need replacing. That's what the retirement mechanic is. And military units for internet and skirmishes and raids on neighbors. Bows, spears, boomerangs, maces. Leather shields for defense, and small recruited from physically strong members of the population. Now a good sort of guideline for this, I, I would estimate, is each point of army is like 5 to 10 uh, warriors. But we don't really have a good place for that yet, which is why I'm trying to clear this out. I definitely want to get a barracks up there as quickly as we can. We're doing good on production, we're really not doing good on much of anything else at the moment. So we at least we'll have the production to do it when we get there. And the heyday of Hierakonpolis. Upper Egyptian chiefdom was one of the most powerful riding Amdos and Abydos. The peak of its power, Hierakonpolis was a city with fortified walls, magnificent temple to Horus, a dazzling white royal palace, and artisans' quarters. And indeed, Upper Egypt is where all the action was. But we're trying to sort of counterbalance that here. And there's our thicket. And yeah, Seth strikes again. So we definitely are going to need to, you know, there's no more protection against Seth and we're out of favor. Don't quite have enough, so we need to deal with that soon. Now that we've got the army in place, though, I am going to go with the domestication of cats. And contraction of habitats due to the withering of the savanna. Wild animals dwelling closer to humans. Wild cats rose to importance, exterminating vermin in the wild, but also by protecting food stocks while living amongst humans. And the Egyptians did worship cats. They did form a very important purpose in getting rid of the vermin, and that allows us plus one food growth every turn. And also, this, of course, is very similar to the way that we previously discussed other animals being domesticated, especially dogs early on. You know, just conditions forcing them closer to humans, the tamer ones become conditioned to living around people, and so on. So now we're going to go and build the barracks, which is going to improve our army. But it's also going to cost 8 production per turn, and then once it's up, it'll cost 1 food and 1 production. So it's not cheap to maintain an army, but we need, need, need it here. And we do have plenty of this 
We'll be able to do it. We are starting to get some more food going. So things are heading in the right direction. But it's been a slow and not the most pleasant start. I'm going to hope it's going to improve going forward. That's going to wrap it up, though, for today. We'll get back to the story of Egypt when we return. Thanks for watching, everybody.